It's not uncommon to receive data that needs to be split into separate cells, either into columns like we have here with this employee data, where the first name, last name and birthday are all stuffed into one cell, and they should be split into three separate columns, one for each piece of information. Or maybe you have data that should be split into rows, like we have here with this roster data, that needs to be separated like this, so we can easily summarize it in different ways. In this video, I'll walk you through the different methods to split cells, and you can download the practice file linked to in the video description and follow along step by step. The first technique we'll look at is text to columns. It's super handy for one-off text splitting tasks with a wizard that guides you through each step. Start by selecting the data you want to split. So I'll select my data, including the heading. And then on the data tab of the ribbon, under data tools, we've got text to columns. This opens the text to columns wizard. And in the first step, you choose how to identify the columns either by delimiter or fixed width. My data has comma separators, so we can leave it on delimited and click next. Here we specify the delimiters. So we need to check the box for comma. I don't have tab delimiters, so we can deselect that. And down below in the preview, we can see how it's going to split the data. Now you can separate it by multiple delimiters. For example, the date of birth has hyphens between the year, month and day. So we could check the box for other and type a hyphen in here. And now we have the date of birth also split out. I actually don't want it split out, so I'm going to deselect other and we'll click next. In the final step, we specify the data type for each column and we can see it defaults to general. Up here, general converts numeric values to numbers, date values to dates and all remaining values to text. So that's fine for the first two columns, but for the date of birth, this is actually text. So if we leave it as is, Excel won't actually format it as a proper date. So in this case, we can choose date here and then choose the date format. So the dates are currently year, then month, then day. So we want YMD. And finally, we need to specify the destination. By default, it's going to overwrite the existing data. I'm going to place it in cell B1, so it's beside it, and click Finish. And now I have the data split into individual components, and you'll notice the dates are all correctly formatted. However, notice with the last name, if we edit the cell and go to the front, there's a space before the first letter. And that's because the delimiter here is actually a comma followed by a space. So we could run this through text to columns again, or we could use the trim function to remove the extra space. Copy that down, copy all those cells and control shift V to paste as values. The limitation of text to columns is it won't update if your data changes or you add more data later but we'll look at some techniques that allow for this shortly. Next up is Flash Fill, Excel's attempt at reading your mind. It's perfect for quickly filling patterns. Simply give it a couple of examples. So let's start with Megan and Billy. And as we start to type in Billy, it's already predicted the pattern. And all I need to do is press enter to insert it. Let's repeat that for the surname. Now this time I also want them formatted in all caps. So I'll type in Chang. Another way to trigger flash fill is with the keyboard shortcut control E. And you'll notice it's respected the formatting and extracted the name. It's also put the heading in up here. We can trigger the heading for this column with control E and that job's done as well. Now, lastly, we need to extract the date. So let's type it in 1972-06-08. It immediately converts it into a proper date format. Let's enter another one, see if it detects the pattern. It hasn't. Let's try control E. And at this point we get an error. And that's because this data is a date format and the data that we're trying to extract is text. So Flashville can't see that they're the same thing. So the way we solve that is we'll delete those, select this column on the home tab, we'll format it as text so that when we type in the date, it doesn't change the layout and Flashville can detect the pattern. So it looks pretty good. Let's press enter and there's my dates. However, they're currently text, which isn't much use to me. So let's use the date value function to convert them into dates. Let's select those cells, control C to copy, and I'm just going to control shift V or paste them as values. It's displaying the date serial number. So let's change the format to short date. We don't need this column anymore, so we can delete that. And let's tidy up the headings. We'll change this one to lowercase. And that job's done. 
Like text to columns, flash fill is great for one-off tasks, but it's not linked to the original data. So if you make changes or add more data, you have to trigger it again. So let's look at something more dynamic. The text split function is available to 365 users, and it's great if you want your data to update automatically whenever the original cell changes. In a cell beside the data, I'm going to enter my text split function. The first argument is the text. That's this cell here. Next is the column delimiter. Well, remember we've got a comma and a space, and we put that in double quotes. The text split function also has an option for row delimiters. We can also ignore empty cells. I don't have any, so we can skip this. We can specify a match mode if we want our delimiter to be case sensitive, and we can pad any empty results with a value. I don't need any of those arguments. It's pretty straightforward, so we'll close text split, press enter, and it spills the results of the various components. Let's copy it down. We have to do it the old fashioned way. You can't double click a spilled array formula to copy it down. A pro tip is if your data has multiple delimiters, and so you can see with our date of birth, we've got hyphens, you can nest them in the delimiter argument by surrounding them inside curly braces. So there's my first delimiter, then comma, and then my next delimiter inside double quotes is the hyphen, Close the curly brace on my delimiters, press enter, and now my date of birth is also split out. Let's copy it down, and there we go. And the nice thing about text split is because it references the original data, if I make changes, for example, let's say Megan Chang's date of birth is incorrect, which would be 1973. As I change it there, it updates in my formula. If functions like TextSplit have you wanting to dig deeper into Excel's power, you'll love my advanced Excel formulas course. Instead of spending years picking up tips here and there, this course is designed to get you up to speed fast with the formulas that make the biggest difference. You'll master essential and advanced functions from ifs and lookups to dynamic arrays and lambda functions, everything you need to stand out. Each lesson is filled with practical real world examples presented in short easy to follow videos. Plus with direct support and mentoring from me personally, you'll be a pro in no time. You'll find the course link in the video description and pinned comment. Power Query is Excel's automation tool for transforming messy data into organized columns with just a few clicks. If you're working with a lot of data or you expect changes and additions to your data set, this is the way to go. I'll start by formatting the data in a table with the keyboard shortcut Control T. It's detected that my table has headers, so I'll click OK, and we can see on the table design tab, my table is called table one. I can give it a new name here if required. We can call this, for example, employees. Press enter, and now I'm ready to load the data into Power Query, which we do via the data tab, and then from table range. This opens the Power Query editor window, and you can see the column is selected, so we can go to the home tab and then split column by. And you can see in this list, there's lots of options for splitting the column. I've got comma delimiters, so we're going to go by delimiter. And in the dialog box here, you can see it's detected the comma. But remember, we've also got a space after the comma. So I'm going to choose a custom delimiter. And in here, I type in a comma and a space. Notice in Power Query, we have more control over the split. I want to split it at each occurrence, but you could split it at the rightmost or leftmost delimiter. All right, let's click OK. And now my data is split out by first name, last name, and date of birth. And notice the date of births are correctly formatted as dates. All I need to do is double click and rename these columns. So this should be first name. This one should be last name. We'll just select what we don't need and press delete. And this one is date of birth. Press enter. You can see the queries picked up the name of the table, which is fine. So we're ready to close and load. We do that via the Home tab and then Close and Load. If we choose Close and Load 2, we have some options as to where we load it. By default, it will load it to a table, but you could load it directly to a pivot table report, a pivot chart, or just create a connection. And then you can specify where you want to put the data, either an existing worksheet or a new one. Let's pop it on this existing worksheet beside the original data, and I'll click OK. So there's my data in the correct format, ready to work with. And the nice thing about Power Query is it isn't just a one-time fix. Anytime you update the original data, for example, let's change Megan Chang's date of birth to 1973, all you need to do is right-click the query, 
and refresh and it goes and grabs the changes. So far we've looked at splitting data into columns, but sometimes you need to split it into rows and we can use the text split functions row delimiter argument for that. But it's not great with more complex tables like this where we need to split the roster column into separate rows for each employee while also retaining the date, shift and hours data. This data is already in an Excel table, so I can go straight to the data tab from table range. I'll start by changing the data type for date because it's currently formatted as date time, but I only have dates here. So let's simplify it to date and I'm going to replace the current step. That's better. Next, I want to select the roster column. That's the one I want to split. And then I'm splitting the column by again. I've got comma delimiters, so we're going to go by delimiter. And here I want custom because I've got a comma and a space. We want to split it at each occurrence. And then in advanced options, instead of splitting it into columns, we want to split it into rows. Let's click OK. And notice the date, the shift and hours have been brought down onto the new rows for each person, which is perfect. Let's rename this one staff roster. Press enter. And now I'm ready to close and load. Let's close and load too. And again, I'm going to pop it on this same sheet beside my existing data. Click OK. And now I can easily filter and summarize the data based on the different attributes for each person. Power Query isn't just for splitting cells. It's an essential tool for all things data cleanup. If you're ready to take your data skills further, I've got another video waiting for you that dives into the best Power Query tricks to save you even more time. Just click here to learn more and I'll see you there.